Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So I wanted to talk a bit today about Snowmageddon happening out in the Maritimes. It's been a couple days now, so the streets are starting to be cleared of snow. Thankfully, Canada is well equipped to deal with these situations. We got lots of big snow machines, lots of snow plows, lots of shovels, and lots of people who are accustomed to this type of weather, especially out there on the East Coast. Now, this was a record snowfall in some places. There were up to 93 centimeters of snow. And because this was a blizzard, blowing snow storm, that 93 centimeters easily becomes 200 centimeters in some places. And oftentimes, it's piling up around cars and houses. People were not able to leave their homes. I believe at one point there was up to 3,000 people without power, which is not a huge amount in the grand scheme of things, but that's still 3,000 people who are without power. I'm surprised it wasn't more. But once again, our infrastructure is built to deal with these kind of situations. This is just one more example of the climate anomalies that we're seeing around the world. The Australian wildfires, of course, have been international news for the last month. Over a billion animals perished in those fires, which are still ongoing and the landscape there is going to be permanently changed. Now, a state of emergency was declared. The Canadian Armed Forces were sent in to help get rid of the snow. I know that sounds like the punchline of a joke, but that is the case. That's what they're there for. There was an order, which essentially was a martial law without the guns on the ground, uh, that wanted people to stay inside, but there were people who were defying this order to go and get supplies because they needed supplies. They weren't ready to deal with these one of these situations. Now, the Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness Minister, Bill Blair, has taken some time away from his agenda to disarm Canadians to rally the troops and coordinate a federal response to help people out on the ground. Now, this situation is kind of unique because it's very similar to a flood situation where you may be trapped in your home. And there's many people who had to literally dig their way out of their house. And even if you were able to dig your way out of your house, you're not driving your car anywhere. So without snowshoes or a snowmobile, there wasn't going to be any resupply and a lot of places were not going to be open for business, obviously, anyways. So this is why it's so important for Canadians and particularly people living along the East Coast where they get huge dumps of snow periodically to have a plan to at least endure three to seven days on your own. And I mean, I've done several videos on this before. The most comprehensive one I've done is called 10 Steps to Survive a Winter Power Outage. I'm going to post a link up here in the top corner. I just recently did another video, How to Survive Winter, Prepping and Survival. That one was more bug out wilderness oriented, but nonetheless, the same principles apply. In terms of essential gear to ride out a situation like this, a lot of times when you get these big snow dumps on the East Coast, uh, you're, you're getting moderate weather, but they unfortunately had very cold weather, uh, wind chills down to minus 35 and so on. Thus, it's very important that you have a way to heat a space or heat your home. In my opinion, propane heaters are probably the safest and most affordable option. The Mr. Heaters are great for heating a small space. Propane heaters come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, oftentimes, they re do require some ventilation. There's different regulations depending on the country that you're in, like in the U.S., uh, you can run a Mr. Heater indoors. It's made to be run indoors, but in Canada, for whatever reason, uh, they suggest that you don't do that or that if you do, you have ventilation, which of course means that the heat that you're pumping into the room is going to be escaping. But typically there's a net gain in heat regardless if you have ventilation or not. Keeping a battery powered carbon monoxide detector in your emergency kit would definitely come in hand. In heavy snow downpours like this, it's very important to have a carbon monoxide detector just in case a chimney flue is blocked. Having a off-grid power source can provide a lot of creature comforts. Uh, there's many portable power systems on the market nowadays. I've reviewed the Jackery on this channel and I've also reviewed the Energy Apex, which uh, pound for pound is still a fairly good generator. It's not gonna power your larger appliances necessarily, but it's gonna power your electronics, some smaller stuff, the television set, uh, other creature comforts like that. Propane can also double as fuel for cooking if you have a propane stove. Obviously, food and water and keeping your water. Obviously, having an ample supply of non-perishable food and water storage on hand for these situations. Even though you're always going to be able to melt snow, having water is just going to be a lot easier. Just keep it at a temperature where it's not going to freeze. And having the proper winter apparel for if you do have to go out 
and work your butt off all day to shovel your way out of one of these snowmageddon situations is going to be crucial. Beware of some of the ratings on these jackets, like Canada Goose in particular. Uh, a lot of these companies now are marketing for style and fashion, and they're not really built to be functional winter jackets like they used to be. So if you get a winter boot that claims it's good to minus 40, it probably isn't. It's probably good to maybe minus 20 or minus 10. You know, the same principle goes with anything, sleeping bags. The manufacturer is always talking about the best case scenario. It's a lot like the ratings of the GMRS radios where they say they're going to be able to go 40 miles, but you only get 5 miles in the best of situations. Take it all with a grain of salt, but I'm going to be doing more videos on that in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. In the next month on this channel, you're going to see a lot of winter survival oriented videos. Some of them are going to be more wilderness based. We're going to talk about uh, furs for synthetic clothing. We're going to talk about the winter wardrobe and the different levels of clothing that I use to deal with extreme winter temperatures. I'm going to be doing some hot tent camping, some ice fishing. So stay tuned if that's something that might interest you. One thing I've noticed with a lot of Canadians is we seem to take a lot of pride in our ability to endure cold temperatures and you know there's a lot of memes right now on the internet oh this is just another day in canada hold my beer type situation we tend to brag about our ability to endure cold temperatures and we laugh when we hear news reports that it's freezing in california or it's zero degrees or five degrees or something like that but the reality is nobody would be laughing if the power went out for a prolonged period of time and there was no naturally gas fed home to retreat to there's lots of videos circulating of people you know hitting the slopes the urban slopes in uh, newfoundland there with their snowboards going down the residential streets uh, with their snowboards and they're having a good time with it but that's only the case if they have a warm place to retreat to and that's not always going to be the case so while there are relatively minimal power outages reported and the response has been quite effective that's not always going to be the case and I can tell you one thing, that when the crap hits the fan, I'm not going to be relying on Bill Blair to come and save me. Could you imagine a situation when the grid was down and they weren't able to remove the snow? You would essentially be landlocked until the snow started to melt. And then, of course, you'd have a lot of flooding issues on your hands. So I'm not too concerned about the well-being of people on the East Coast. Uh, people are having fun with the situation. Help is on the way. And once again, they're accustomed to a lot of snow, but this could happen anywhere. No matter where you relocate to, there are gonna be environmental hazards that you have to prepare for, and you have to have an emergency plan ready for. I'm gonna to link to a couple more winter survival videos for you here. Stay warm. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out.